Good morning, guys. Welcome back to the channel. And um, this is coffee. And this is the view. Let me tell you, this air is ah, so fresh. I love just breathing in fresh air. And uh, I'm on the, the journey south. But now I'm out of this tent full time. I don't know if you can see because of the sun. But I recently just moved out of the room I was staying in. And uh, man, I'm just saving money. <laughs> That's what it's all about. And uh, I'm working on RVs. So as I head south, I'm going for the snowbirds who are in New Mexico, Arizona, and I think a, there's some snowbirds that go to El Paso, uh, but really I have the flexibility to go see where business is gonna be good, but those are just some morning thoughts uh, telling you what I'm up to. <laughs> I'm just waking up. It is super cold this morning. I have a baklava on and a beanie and my two jackets. It's freezing. Right here I'm in Gray's Landing in southern Idaho. So it says 31 on the truck. It was really cold out. I checked the weather and it was like 40 degrees. Probably. No, there's no way. It was so cold. So, yeah, it's just like a couple mile long dirt road to get out here. Obviously no service. Just desert. So I just got off that two lane highway. We're now in Wells, Nevada. See about the billboards. I don't know, there's just something uh, enchanting about the old, old school, small desert towns. I guess there used to be this, I don't know what you'd want to call it, this spirit of being on the road and road tripping in America and seeing all the old motels and the old buildings, the old auto mechanic shops, small little RV park. So, I ventured way out here, off of the highway near Wendover and the Salt Lake uh, Salt Flat. You can see Wendover way out there. And so right now, I'm in this place called Blue Lagoon. All right, here we are in the desert. It's like some makeshift dock. I guess if there's a little bit of um, water, you need this to walk because it would turn into horrible mud that you couldn't even walk through, let alone drive. But I don't think it's raining in a while. It's been a while since I've been out here. But it is really trippy to see the salt flat up front or in front of me because last time I went, it was wet. It was like January. And I drove a, a lowered sports car to the salt flats, which is not the car you want. So I'm gonna go down this pathway, this little trail, and come back before I just shoot somebody for robbing my toolbox. So let's go over there. Dude, someone brought out their onions and that was pretty recent. They probably bagged their trash, left it somewhere and the animals just destroyed it, threw it everywhere. 
How do you forget your shorts here, though? Dude, no way. There's an actual lake. It's starting to get um, kind of marshy. I can hear water flowing. All right, here we are. This place is crazy. Wow, this water is like super clear. I kind of just want to jump in, man. So I touched the water and it is super nice. I want to get in, but I don't want to get it. Look at all these bugs, dude, these mosquitoes. Crazy amount. So I'll pass. By the time I strip down, I'll have like 80 mosquito bites. So I'm good. All right, next I'm gonna go to a place called Gold Hill. And that is over yonder, around that peak, I think. And it's a little, either ghost town or a real small town that used to be big. Man, I just got horse flies swarming me, dude. This is a lot of fun because I have not been able to get out and explore. So thank you guys for watching. If you like and comment, it'll help me explore more. Definitely not gonna find any RVs to fix out here, but it feels good to be fully self-contained and off-grid, be able to fix something if I break it, because I'm pretty far away from everybody at the moment. All right, after driving through what seems to be like 20 minutes, just dirt roads, of course, it's a 55 mile hour speed limit. You get through pretty quick. I see some buildings way over here. I don't know if you saw them before they panned out because of the mountains. But the buildings are there, and right off into the uh, distance, as we turn the corner, you can see the salt flats. So we're going to be going down the hill and crossing the salt flat, actually, which will be kind of cool. All right, check this out. This is kind of neat. So I didn't Google this place or have a predetermined plan to come here. I just wanted to stop somewhere on Google Maps where it would lead me to cross the salt flats. So but this is Gold Hill, Nevada. I'm assuming that's the hill and there must have been gold back in the day. We got some old buildings, a farm, lots of trailers. I'm sure these guys need an RV tech now. not even be anything out here like no services it might just be residences or um, sometimes it's reservation land welcome to gold hill it says on the building right there cool old vintage campers general What's a general merchandise on the side? It doesn't look like much is here, so I'm gonna keep on moving. That camper has a residential AC unit on it. I don't think anybody's living there, but still, it's kind of funny. Old foundation, private property. What a, what a property this is. That's a big fluffy dog. No, go back home, dude. Don't chase me. All right, then we get the salt flat ahead of us. So this will be cool. All right, we have a small hiccup here. I went ahead and uh, set up my Starlink, so I have some internet. But one of my tires does not have air in it. It needs air to work, so I'm gonna go ahead and change it out. The other one I got down here, and good thing I switched them out. And this is a new tire. I think if I do a lot more of this, I need to get some better quality tires. But these are 
Cooper Discoverers. I've had good luck with them uh, for a while, for a few years actually, on different trucks. So. Oh god, it's just the Ryobi, no worries. So I'm gonna move this stuff out of the way and get my tire kit out and uh, switch this out. Well, this has been fun. Well, this has been fun. I got the cool industrial look on one of my wheels now. I've not been mauled by a mountain lion or shot by the cartel. And my spare tire now has a hole in it. So I probably don't want to do this again. I know it look rough. It's not because I just changed a tire. I haven't showered in like two days either. Reminder to self, I drive like a rally driver. I'm gonna change tires and parts like a rally driver. So, keep that in mind. All right. Good to go. Look how freaking nasty that thing is, dude. Ah, it's like a giant grasshopper. All past, dude. Ugh. Right now we're on the uh, Pony Express historic route. So there's all these uh, real old buildings that the pioneers made back in the day. Some of them are just you know remnants of what's left, what's left standing. And there's other houses where you know they're relatively new. Here's one, and there's another, a few more actually. Still pretty cool nonetheless. Express historic room. And so I guess the, the station that was put here in 1860, when I read the, um, they have a little placard in front of the old station. It's way back there. It's a newer house now, but the placard said it was, I think, built in 1860 until like 1871 or something like that when the telegraph came out. You only imagine like the stagecoaches that would come through here. They had all the mail. That was the Pony Express, at least from memory. Uh, that's what I think it was. And then uh, we had the telegraph come out. News traveled a lot faster, a lot, a lot faster. So if you were an outlaw in the time, it was bad news. But still, this is the uh, the old stagecoach trail that we're on right here. It's pretty cool. All right, so we're still on the Pony Express Trail, and uh, we went through a lot of flat plains, salt flats, and I just, you know, went up the mountains, and look what I found. This looks cool. Very dangerous. Let's get out and go look. All right, here we are. This is my exact location if the lizard people jump out and take me to their underground base, so. Oh, we got some guy behind me. I don't know what he wants. So we had one person just pass me. It's the one person I've seen in hours. Look at this thing. Someone's obviously been here at camp. I'm gonna go up there and check it out. I decided to come up a different way and uh, off in the distance. I don't know if that's just... Are you tell me, does that look like caves over there? It's a little too far for me to want to go check out, but... If you like the video, maybe you'll have more motivation to go I'll find some different ones for a different video. I'm just trying to survive my hike up this mountain, dude. Yeah, I have no idea where the mine would be up here. Because this was... a part of the process. But it wasn't everything. This is not a mine. This is like 
part of the process of transportation of the ore. That's what I'm thinking. Someone tell me in the comments. What is this? Give everybody some insight. I'm redeeming myself here. Last time I came out to Monument Valley, I wasn't able to see anything. It was so cloudy and rainy. Everything was uh, hidden. Good morning, good morning. So, slept out at Hat Rock, which is 20 miles north of Monument Valley. And uh, right now, we're just rolling up to the forest gum. So I stopped at a little pull off. There's about two or three right here. And it's just awesome. So I'm gonna take the cell in. Probably stay here for five, 10 minutes. And then I'd like to get going. What's up guys? So it's a few hours later in the day. I decided I'd redeem myself and go back to Ship Rock, New Mexico and try to get to Ship Rock. And I've succeeded. It was actually a lot difficult, a lot more difficult than I thought it was even when it was dry. But I don't have high clearance on my four-wheel drive vehicle, but you know, I dragged my tow hitch a little bit on some of the steep inclines, but I've just stopped right here in the middle and I want to see what I can go climb, what I can see around here. The story behind this place is actually pretty interesting if you ever Google it, but Ship Rock, because we're over by Navajo Nation and Four Corners, uh, there tail behind it and I don't want to say the wrong thing but basically this was like an actual ship they landed here and I guess something's gonna happen and the ship will leave again but it was a ship at some point and <laughs> that's the extent of what I know about it but nonetheless it's pretty cool being in a flat desert and all of a sudden there's this uh, geological anomaly or if you believe in the mud flood and all this other stuff there's some other theories behind it. We also have this long ridge that I'm looking at right here. It's a, a wall of some sort. So I kind of wanted to see that from my own, well, I want to see that with my own eyes. I don't believe we're told everything in the history books, the way that things actually happen. And a lot of biblical history is hidden. So yeah, just want to come check things out for myself, man. We don't know where we live. I don't care what the history books told you. Believe what you want to believe, but there's no sense in pretending that the book and the TV screen tell you the truth, because they don't. And maybe I'm the crazy one for just not believing the general consensus. So I'm up here on the base, and uh, just for scale, I mean, I'm using wide angle here. That's the truck. That's the mount. Pretty big. Okay, I'm gonna go down here. I'm gonna jog my way up that way and climb up that side and see what I see over there. It's a lot higher. I'll probably get a good view of the valley and some of the other mesas that are around here. It's starting to get windy. It's actually not too hot. You know, I'm wearing some pants and short sleeve shirt. It's like 70 something degrees. It's really just a beautiful day. So I'm up on this uh, other mound now. Lots of views, no one's coming. Let's see. There's a whole other side to the south. That's where I'm facing, according to my compass. Not sure how accurate that is. But here we have the big wall. There's another wall that's behind me, a lot smaller. But it looks like I went the hard way to get in here. And this is the real way that everyone else gets in, the real uh, verified way. It's a dirt road, so. You don't need a full tri vehicle. But there I was, making extra steps. I didn't have to. Oh, let's go down this side. 
this road. I want to go check out that wall. All right, so we were driving on that road and we came down this road, if we would stop focusing on my hand, and went up this mountain and here we are. Here's the start of that wall. I think I'll just make this quick and leave the truck running. Here's the back side of Shiprock, kind of like a wasteland. I see a few things that would be fun to explore, like you get a couple ridges over there, you have that wall. I mean, those look like caves almost, but I'm not entirely sure. Then you got the view you saw earlier. I'm sure many people. So there's a little trail going up to the wall here. I mean, it really does look like a wall. It looks like if there was a war, this thing got just absolutely demolished, obliterated. Because I mean, look how straight this ridge is. It's pretty nuts. It's not a tectonic plate ridge either, where the plates are meeting and it's pushing the crust up. All right. Carefully making my way up. Kind of a steep drop off. Crazy. It's pretty crazy looking. I don't know, what do you guys think? Is it just science? Or is this some forbidden history? So I just left the entrance, the real entrance, and man, there's such easy access. I didn't have to drive an hour off-road through random trails to find it. And that is what it looks like from the highway. It's pretty impressive. I do like it. It was really, really beautiful right there. And then we have this to look at for another two hours. Coffee going. Good morning. Oh, yeah, doing this with one hand. I thought I learned this yesterday. Yesterday I stopped at REI. I was trying to find a single burner camp stove used. It's a little bit harder than I thought, so I just went to REI, bought it new. You get some bug spray, some small things, but ultimately um, just things that make it easier to live out of the truck like this. But as you get coffee going, this is where I'm at today. We're in some, we're some BLM land outside Albuquerque. You can see some balloons out, way out there. So I've already went ahead and established the web page and I ran some Google ads too. Cause that's what I do, I'm a, I'm a marketer. So that's what I do, I'm a marketer. I, I run ads, I send people to my website, they fill out the form and then I can send whatever information I need to them to help them or set an appointment. So that's what I've been doing. And uh, this is the first time I've ever decided, you know, I'm gonna, move states. I'm going to try this somewhere else. Because eventually I think other people, if they want to go hit the road or do what I'm doing, yeah, who wants to do this? A lot of freaking sticks. Lots of people. Lots of people. I know this, this glamorous life, a lot of people are jealous, so I want to make sure you guys can go camp out here in the dirt too, if that's what you want to do. But no, actually, I want to run a service where I can market your service business, wherever you want to go, wherever you want to travel. The idea would be use all platforms and funnel customers your way before you arrive. When you arrive, you already have appointments. 
This is something that I failed to do. I don't have any appointments and I just got here, but that's all right. Um, I had appointments coming in, but I have a couple things I need to do, like wash my car, get organized, make sure I know where all my tools are. <laughs> the sun is like making me black, which isn't a bad thing, by the way. It's probably making me look cooler, but um, where was I getting here? cool to travel if you want to do that i think you should and so that's the service i want to provide i'm still working it out the kinks anyway for myself so i do mobile rv repair but there's so many niche service businesses like the other day i just saw an ad for garage door repair and i know that they they existed before it's just i don't think of garage door repair as this big service but sure enough out in phoenix arizona homeboys running an ad and i saw it i'm nowhere near phoenix so i don't know what he's doing his search parameters are off, but I also don't have a garage door. I don't own one, so. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna drink some coffee. I gotta go to the tire shop and get my spare put back in the spot where it belongs because it makes me look like a tweaker. And then I need to get some uh, detailing done on this guy. It's a little dirty. Pan the camera around so I can give you guys a better view of what I'm looking at. Man, this chair REI slaps. It is so comfy, dude. I'm so glad I bought this. I had a little, uh, like, regular chair that you see at, like, Walmart. It took up so much space. It was kind of cheap and uncomfortable. But this, dude, this is pure comfort right here. I feel like I'm, I don't know. This is a nice chair, dude. This, this is a nice chair. But you can see it's pretty dirty in there. On my toolbox, I spilled a bunch of diesel fuel. I don't know why I did that, but I did. So we need to go clean all that off and uh, make sure I don't want a tweaker. And then after that, we're gonna run some ads and get some appointments, make some money. So that's why we're down here is for this balloon festival. We got 100,000 people visiting just for these balloons. And that's what we're gonna go do. I don't know if I'm gonna end this video right here. So we'll see. I don't think I'm gonna film any of my appointments. But thanks for guys. Thank you guys for watching. I realize it's kind of a different video. It's just me exploring, doing whatever. But it's a fun time, man. If you guys can, go explore the country. There's so much history. There's so many things to see out in the desert. And um, if you don't want to do that, just subscribe and watch my videos. That helps me too. So, all right, guys. Peace. Take it easy.